Mr. R Richard Newton. Followed by Katie Davis, followed by Sandra Martinez. Honorable Mayor Sanchez, members of the council and the public. I would like to thank council member Robinson for his excellent video on Oceanside government. In it, council member Joyce was noted as the committee representative to the Oceanside and Vista school districts and therefore the council has an interest in school board policies. Schools are institutions that should be pillars of virtue, work ethic, practical skills and scholarly learning. The Oceanside School Board is dysfunctional, recalcitrant, and indifferent to common decency and good governance. Just last night, I witnessed the school board ineptly vote to approve a bulk purchase of laptops, even though a better quality laptop at half the price was brought to their attention. Yet, like lemmings, they marched off the cliff and approved the purchase without debate or consideration, 5-0, as they do on almost every vote. Absolutely pathetic. Regarding common decency, the board and superintendent are deficient, in my opinion. An issue currently before the board is a selection of books best described as instructional manuals on how to perform sex acts, many which extol alternative lifestyles. This material is visually graphic and inappropriate for public schools. Yes, kids can get this and far more on the internet. Nevertheless, schools should lead by example and maintain society standards, focusing on much needed academics instead. This is a national trend. United States Congressman Chip Roy cited the book Gender Queer and noted that it was so vile that he could not even show the pictures, yet this book is in Oceanside's schools. If this material is not appropriate for adults in Congress, how can it be acceptable for children in Oceanside? Clearly it is not. However, because it is in our schools and our schools have them, they are appropriate to show here and discuss among adults. Because a picture is worth a thousand words, here are some pictures from the book. As you look at these, I ask each of you to comment tonight. The public would like to know if you find this material inappropriate for children, and if so, then issue a definitive, unequivocal condemnation of the board and superintendent tonight at this meeting. Please do not hide behind protocol and say you cannot comment now, as I have witnessed council members and the mayor engage in dialogue with the public on off-agenda items in the past. Thank you for your consideration, and the public looks forward to each of your responses. So this one right here uh, recommends going to a porn studio called kink.com in San Francisco. Next. This shows oral sex in two different pictures between two uh, androgynous individuals. And these are in our schools, and the school board is aware of them. This one shows children urinating in a yard, not wearing any clothes. This one shows a bloody toilet, and I quote, it overflowing with a soup of blood and this one shows um, masturbation at the top, gay sex, nude gay sex in the middle, and masturbating while driving, while dreaming, quote, of a blowjob on the bottom. Thank you very so much. Thank you very much. Tonight. Uh, Katie Davis. Council. Long-time Oceanside resident, first-time speaker, maybe last time. <laughs> um, anyhow, um, I want to thank you for your service because I don't know how you all do this every other week. Um, and I thank you for hearing me out over school curriculum. I'm a long-time resident of Oceanside, but I grew up in Solana Beach and benefited from an excellent school system. I graduated from Torrey Pines High, then UC Davis, and recently got a graphic design certificate from Miracosta College. I'm a big fan of public education. I'm also a big fan of the English language. After reading what passes as suitable school library books here in Oceanside, I have to weigh in by quoting one such book and sharing my observation. I give you Milk and Honey. Written by one Rupi Kaur, who's managed to normalize hustler forum style prose and pepper it with obscene illustrations. Now, before I start talking dirty, you should know a few things about me. I love gays, I hate bullies, and I dream of a world where folks treat others the way they want to be treated. I relish a good debate and challenge anyone, I mean anyone, to explain to me how books such as Milk and Honey benefit teenagers and their academic development. Rupi opens her book with the following riveting salvo. The first boy that kissed me held my shoulders down like the handlebars of the first bicycle he ever rode. I was five. 
He had the smell of starvation on his lips, which he picked up from his father, feasting on his mother at 4 a.m. He was the first boy to teach me my body was forgiving to those that wanted it, unquote. Apparently, after enduring Sodom and Gomorrah-style family reunions, where her knees were pried open by cousins and uncles and she was touched by all the wrong men, our narrator turns into quite the confident sexual voyeur. Again, I quote, Baby, lick me. Like your mouth has the gift of reading and I'm your favorite book. Find your favorite page in the soft spot between my legs and read it carefully, fluently, vividly. Don't you dare leave a single word untouched. And I swear, my ending will be so good. Well, at least this book has a happy ending. Somewhere, Jane Austen is rolling in her grave, as I can't imagine Mr. Darcy gutting Elizabeth with his fingers like he's scraping the inside of a cantaloupe. All I can hope is that this woeful author, who has mastered the art of both the, the run-on sentence and incomplete sentence, gets enough royalties from her school library book to pay for a good therapist and a decent editor. I would welcome your views tonight on this matter. Sandra Martinez. Sandra Martinez. This book is called Let's Talk About It. It's found in our local high school libraries, is lab self-labeled as a guide to sex, relationships, and being human. There are valuable lessons on compassion, communication, and self-esteem. There are also pornographic images not suitable for a public education setting. Sex education has historically been a part of education. There is an example of basic anatomy in the book presented in a clinically objective manner. This is an example of female anatomy. Later, we have a page on the anus. It states, the opening is also chock full of sensitive nerve, making it a primo erogenous zone for touching and penetrating. This is not appropriate for public schools. In addition to anatomy, some of the topics and pictures in this book include a how-to on masturbation, oral sex, and anal sex. Children don't need this specialized information in a school environment. They have family, friends, and other readily available resources. Here we have a page about males and females, quote. It says, testes historically label someone as male, ovaries historically label someone as female. It continues on to say that people can medically change their bodies to have various traits, making it sound so simple. Once a person is subjected to puberty blockers, counter gender hormones, or surgeries, those are artificial constructs that cannot be reversed without harmful consequences, not to mention all the complications associated with these medical interventions in the first place. So why is it so important to sexualize and influence vulnerable children with these ideas? Why present this material in erotic poses? At OUSD, only 13% of the students are proficient in school basics of reading, writing, and science and math. The emphasis should be on education, not fornication. It's important to accept others with compassion and understanding, but why promote smut in school? What is the real agenda? Is it financial gain for the pharmaceutical and medical industry? Is it to confuse and damage youth? Or is it to undermine our culture? I am asking each of you tonight to denounce the, place, denounce the placement of these books in our school libraries. They are inappropriate for children and inappropriate for the community of Oceanside. What more do you need to see? Graham Fraser. Followed by Rose Iguera. Is Rose Iguera here? Yeah. Uh, thank you, council members, uh, longtime resident of Oceanside. I'm here tonight to talk to you about the importance of improving the quality, and by that I mean of reading, writing, and, and arithmetic of education in o Oceanside schools. I'm very aware the city and the school district are totally different uh, in, uh, entities. Uh, however, the success or failure of the school district to educate our kids reflects directly on the success of the city. 
these young people are uh, being graduated or just leaving, as the previous speaker said, with uh, below several grades, uh, only operating at a very low efficiency rate. Certainly not enough to get even a fairly medial job. Um, I think the... Um, I'm concerned about the, uh, the direction of the, uh, of the woke agenda that's being um, uh, uh, forced on our children, and that is at the expense of, uh, of good, of good uh, uh, basics. I'm, I'm happy that there's going to be a liaison between the school district and the city. I think there's many opportunities there, but I would encourage that the city provide extra funding for that, develop a program to see how they can actually improve the city's um, uh, uh, children that are coming out so they can actually get jobs. Also, with good uh, schools, uh, companies that are coming, that are considering coming to San Diego, uh, will look at the first thing people typically look at, how are the schools? And they come, they want to go to areas where the school districts where the schools are good, and they're not good here. So that sort of reflects on the city. So I, I would urge you to, to uh, pay more attention to the, to the fact and somehow try to help the school district produce a better quality education without all, and, and eliminate some of the work and, and replace them with uh, the basics. Thank you. Rose? All right, so we poured over about 95 pages of school book lists for Oceanside Unified School District. So this is pre-K all the way through grade 12. We found a lot of books on racism, a lot of books on hatred for America and your country, a lot of uh, inappropriate sexual books, pornography, like you, ju you just have seen. I'm going to read to you a portion of this book. Um, it's called All Boys Aren't Blue. And this is at Oceanside Library. The whole time, you took, you took your, off your shorts, followed by your boxers. There you stood in front of me, fully erect, and said, taste it. At first I laughed and refused, but then you said, come on, Matt, taste it. This is what boys like us do when we like each other. I finally listened to you. The whole time I knew it was wrong, not because I was having sexual intercourse with a guy, but that you were my family. Goes on to say, after a minute or so, you stopped. You then laid me on the ground and got on top of me. You began stroking yourself in front of me. I just stood there nervous because I didn't know what to expect next. So we are promoting um, incest, masturbation, oral sex. Further on. Uh, by that time, I was using a dating app online called Black Gay Chat. Now we're encouraging high-risk behavior. One night... Let, goes on to say, nervous and drunk, I listened and got on my stomach. He got on, on top and slowly inserted himself into me. It was the worst pain I think I had ever felt in my life. He then added more lube and tried again, which felt better, but not by much. He began his stroking motion. Eventually, I felt a mi mix of pleasure with the pain. I was in pain for ne nearly three weeks following that encounter and too afraid to go to the doctor for help because I would have had to tell them that I had been having anal sex. So don't go to the doctor either. And also the banana test. So our school district, along with many others, is triple X. Um, there's five hours that are spent where outside educators come in that are funded by the Democratic Party and Planned Parenthood. And they have kids they stick a large penis in front of little minor children and tell them to put a condom on them, and they do relay races for them. They spend one hour speaking about gender identities, gay sex, things that are completely inappropriate for minors. So I would like to remind you, mayor and council members, 
You took an oath of office. I do solemnly swear that I am fully qualified according to the constitution of this state to exercise the duties of the office to which I have been elected and that I will, to the best of my ability, discharge Thank you very much. Thereof. Thank Please you very much. Your constitu constitutional duty. Ann Fraser, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Ann Fraser. And Ann will be speaking from her seat. Okay. Thank you. Boy, it's overwhelming. Um, I just want to thank you very much for having an invocation this evening. I really appreciated that. I haven't been in these chambers in many years, and I see some people I, I know from the past. Thank you for that. And I really request, Mr. Joyce, as the liaison between here and Oceanside Unified School District, would you suggest they follow suit? I know you can't answer me now, but... I will check in with you later. Would you speak with me, please, on that? I also want to thank you very much. For, well, it's not it's past six, but at least you considered having early the um, input from the public. I'm 77 years old and somewhat handicapped. My husband's 82. Driving with him at night time is not the safest thing in the world. Um, so it gets late at the Unified School District because, indeed, we are put last, we the public. And um, one other thing, I was born in Australia, if you can't tell. I'm now an American citizen. When I denounced my citizenship to, the, to Australia and pledged my allegiance to the United States of America, I had to learn a lot about this country. Amongst them was the Pledge of Allegiance. Do you know there is not a comma before between in God we trust? It is in God we trust. One nation under God. One nation under God is one complete sentence. I learned English very well in Australia. And there is no comma. Most American citizens, and I listen tonight, you do put a comma between... One nation under God. There is no comma. I implore you to look it up, say one nation under God, and continue. It makes sense. It's English. I really cover my face when I see these books because I wasn't raised in those traditions. I'm from a different culture. I'm a prude, and I'm going to remain a prude. I'm a Christian. I'm going to remain a Christian. Onward, Christian soldiers. God bless you all. I pray for you. Good evening. Thank you. Next is Patrick Higuera, followed by Patty Kay, followed by Susan Custer, followed by Jimmy Knott. Is Jimmy the last? Okay. Hey, y'all. Uh, you can see by the, the scores of those kids in our schools that are failing. It's gotten worse and worse, and I've been going to these school meetings for the last two years. Um, it was about about a year ago, it was about, 80, about 56%, you know, 60%. Now we're all the way up to 84, 88, and 91% of kids being, um, you know, they're, they, they can't read, write, or do arithmetic. And our schools are meant to just teach kids. They're not to indoctrinate kids. But 
Is that something you would let, I don't even know if you have little kids or grandkids, I don't know, but is that something you would allow your kids to see in a school? I mean, that's pretty pathetic. I remember, you know, when I was little, it's a true story. When I was little, I was walking in the store with my, with my brother and uh, we had to walk to this, uh, through this, it was like a, I don't know, it was like a water area. And we found this magazine called Moosey Goosey. And it basically was a, it was a, um, it was a comic book that had sexual things in it. And, and I was seven, eight years old and I saw that and I'm like, oh my gosh, took it home, showed my mom. And, uh, <sighs> To this day, I remember that. I mean, that's imprinted in my mind. And I was like six, seven years old. This is in our schools. You know, where do you guys stand on this? As uh, You know, I'm sure you guys are married and have family members. You know, I'm sure you do, Mr. Kime. I mean, would, is that something you would show your, your son, daughter, or your grandkids, Mr. Robinson? Is that something you'd show your grandkids? Something you'd be proud of for them to check out that book and bring it home? Next year is an election year. You know, and you guys are, I don't know, I don't think you are, you, you just got elected, unfortunately, but, um, you know, it's an election year and, uh, you know, we want people to stand up for families because the school district's not doing it. They're not standing up for families. We need strong American people to stand up to, to educate our strong American kids because they're our future. So we're depending on you guys to make the right decision. Please help us. Patty Kay, followed by Susan Custer followed by Jimmy Knott, followed by Yesenia Hernandez. Is Yesenia Hernandez here? No, she left. She left, that's what I thought. Uh, we have some reading material for each of the council members, so please don't leave without it. Um, we don't enjoy doing this. We've been to, to uh, school board meetings now for two years and, and seen the um, lack of uh, the school board um, being stone hedges, no, no communication, no variance, no cooperation. So we're bringing it to another audience, and, and it's not fun, but we have to make people in the city aware of what's going on in the schools. So with uh, Oceanside actually has a higher local program, I believe, as well as Maricosta. With those grades, those failing grades that you saw, you can't even hire local. Do you understand? And also, when you're looking for a place to live, you, as a conscientious parent, look at the school board, school district ratings, and generally you gravitate to the neighborhood that has good schools. Um, so with these failures in the school system in Oceanside, there's no incentive to increase the property value. So we're losing twice. We're losing our kids. They can't find a job. They won't be able to find a job with an 80, 91% failure rate. And number two, Oceanside is losing, um, you know, their tax revenue, which, as you saw before, was, you know, the largest revenue that you received. Okay, not cannabis. Okay, that was minimal. So anyway, um, that's our concern. We've been asking to raise the level of the education, and when we found out what was in the libraries, that is another variable that drives down those scores as well as the drugs. Um, in a follow-up to gender queer, um, this is just a quick little note there. Um, promoting um, drugs at a teenage age. The picture you see is a young teenager with her period, having trouble with their periods. Excuse me, council members, thank you. Uh, having trouble with their period, and so they're going to give them oxycodone and lorazepam for a period. I mean, cook them on drugs early? Yep, that's what this book does, gender queer. Okay, my book is fun. fun. And the, the name comes from a funeral home that the, the girl that was in the book and her father was the director, okay? So um, the book talks about her story growing up, coming out as a lesbian in college, discovering family secrets after her father died that he was gay and had gay lovers. It talks about lesbian encounters, various sexual positions. Thank you very much. Next is Susan Custer. 
Good, e <clears throat> good evening. Um, I've been a realtor for 25 years and served on the Oceanside Planning Commission for the last four years. In both of these positions, the quality of life in Oceanside is frequently discussed. I recognize the importance of quality schools when people are deciding where to live. There are several concerns buyers always address when choosing a city to buy a home in. One is the crime rate, rate and the other is the test scores of the schools. These two things actually take priority over finding a home they love. It tells us that safety and education for their children is of primary importance. In Oceanside, reading proficiency is only 16% and math is only 14%. Or said another way, our failure rate is 84% for reading and 86% for math. It's been my experience that buyers absolutely love all that Oceanside has to offer. Beautiful beaches, family activities, restaurants, and shopping. But when they start to get serious about looking for a home, they go to the school, the school scores and the conversation changes. Families then consider whether it's better for them to move to Oceanside and put their kids in private schools or move to another city with better schools. They frequently, almost always actually, choose a home in a city with a better school if they have that option. Buyers also think that poor schools contribute to higher crime rate. And as you can see in this chart, Oceanside, uh, has a higher crime rate than the surrounding city. It was 76% of, it was higher than 76% of all cities, and I better hurry up. Overall, schools help attract good jobs, good communities, good companies, good uh, residents. Um, the declining economy and real estate prices is of significance with, with, the good, with having poor schools in this declining economy economy and real estate prices, the schools are even more important. With a quality education, we can retain and keep some good companies and some quality jobs. The low scores will just push them out. Please use your influence as the city council mm -hmm. and you, Eric, with, as the liaison between the city council and the schools to remove all these distractions from our schools and focus on education programs that will be so important for our children's futures. Let's give the kids, these kids, the future our parents gave to us and the future they deserve. Will you, the city council, thank you very much. Thank you very much. To improve our schools. Thank Jimmy Knott. Yes. 